Kelly, it's good to see you. I, uh, I've been coming to Chelan for a couple of years. I remember well coming up in the spring of, no, the summer of 1951, I came up to do a story on the lake. And I stopped off at the, on Wooden Avenue with the chamber had a, a booth down there and uh, met a young lady. Uh, and I got my story for the paper and uh, asked her for a date. <laughs> and uh, she said, okay, next Sunday I'll, I'll go. I'm glad to go out. I'd forgotten to tell her I was going to take her on a hike. <laughs> but we went clear up to Hearts Pass and I hiked her up to Slate Peak. There wasn't any road up on top then. There was a lookout up on top of Slate Peak at that time. And oh, the, the, the view was beautiful. But uh, all that Kathy could see was the top of the, be the bed to lie down on. She, was, she had sandals and a skirt on. <laughs> and, uh, she never let me forget that. <laughs> but she did marry me that, that, <laughs> that December of uh, 1951 over here in the Methodist Church. So we, uh, we, uh, I found out that she had lots more credentials as far as history than I did. My dad didn't get into Wenatchee until 04, and my golly, her granddad, Herb Kingman, came here in the 80s with his brother, Morrison. Uh, Morrison, you remember, uh, found the Horseshoe Basin mines, he and Purcell, and uh, then sold them for a big chunk of money, I think for $20,000, <laughs> which, uh, you know, back in the early 90s was a lot of money. Uh, Herb uh, was a, a carpenter, though. He uh, had a boat building business over on Lakeside, built, built some of the uh, early boats here on the lake. And uh, uh, he, is, he was also involved in the river. Uh, a group of the folks had organized uh, the uh, uh, Chelan Electric River Electric Company on the Chelan River and had gotten the rights on the river. Well, uh, Herb and his brother Morrison took that over in 1903, and uh, they were lucky because uh, three years later, the Great Northern decided they wanted to buy those water rights, and the Great Northern took over uh, that uh, Lake Chelan Electric Supply Company that uh, uh, Morrison and Herb had uh, I think they made a pretty good chunk of money off that, too. The river was important in those early years because they were thinking of electric interurbans back in the early decade, the first decade of, uh, of uh, the last century. Uh, they had actually started to build one from Wenatchee to, uh, to Kashmir, and I, I can remember seeing the, the grading coming out of Kashmir uh, uh, as we used to drive by there. But that was stopped by World War I. They couldn't get any financing. The uh, proposal for a, an electric railroad from Chelan uh, was brooded about, uh, but uh, the Great Northern was really the main character in, in those days. And uh, they took over, uh, and they were interested in this in this Chelan country. Uh, I have a brochure in my files. It says, Outings on Lovely Lake Chelan on line of the Great Northern Railroad. Now, the closest line of the Great Northern Railroad was Wenatchee. <laughs> <laughs> but in flowery language, they talked about Lovely Lake Chelan. Uh, let me read you what they said about it. The trip up the Columbia on any of the comfortable steamers is in itself an interesting experience. The mighty Oregon here rolls through a land where it still hears few sounds save its own dashings. Occasionally, the steamer's whistle reverberates from, about, from shore to shore as a landing is approached 
where boxes of sun-baked peaches or sacks of wheat are taken on from the valleys lying out of sight beyond the hills. But in general, the onward course of the steamer is unchecked except for the current, which in places forms rapids, animating but not dangerous. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> they were <laughs> they, they were great talkers, <laughs> but the great northern was interested in Chelan. And uh, back when they finally built the railroad up in 1914, uh, they bought the Field Hotel two years later, 1916, and uh, put out a great, great big brochure about Lake Chelan, and uh, it. It describes everything, and it describes uh, where you can go and what's happening in the field. And, and of course, they own the field hotel, so uh, they got it both ways. Uh, uh, Lake Chelan obviously was a uh, an attraction that was that was important to them, and before. The, the railroad was completed, however. They uh, hired an artist to paint along the Great Northern Route, a lady by the name of Abby Williams Hill was a painter that was uh, uh, came out of the coast, and uh, she was hired on a contract with the Great Northern in 1903 and came to Lake Chelan, painted a whole series of places up lake as well as the gorge. Uh, she also painted scenes along the Great Northern over towards uh, Everett on the Stevens Pass. Uh, her collection, thanks to my sister, was acquired by uh, the college, the University of Puget Sound in Tacoma. And they produced this book about 10 years ago by Ron Field, who was the head of their uh, art department. In eight, this was eight, 1989. Uh, you know, uh, I might make a suggestion to you folks. If you could borrow some of those photographs from the University of Puget Sound, it would make a heck of an exhibit because Abby Williams Field was a very fine painter. She painted not only for the Great Northern, but also for the Northern Pacific uh, for a number of different trips. She was a remarkable woman and uh, uh, had uh, took her children along with her and her tents. It was, uh, it was a great story. Well, uh, uh, obviously, Chelan was uh, a spot where people wanted to come to, including me. My dad uh, finally bought a place in 1929, just after the lake was raised. And, uh, but, but Chelan also was putting out bro big brochures earlier on. This is about 1911. And uh, it says, what do the wild waves say? You will find it at Chelan. I was interested in a little piece about the roads. I will read that to you here because it was kind of interesting about what they were saying about the highways in 1911. Uh, they've got pictures of Lakeside, First Creek, and uh, uh, first I got to find it. But. Uh, in 1911, of course, there was really not a highway up here from Wenatchee. And uh, uh, here's what it says. Oh, yes. A permanent sawmill is located on Bear Creek, and several portable mills, portable mills are operating in different places. A great many saw logs are furnished to the mill at Chelan from this locality. A wagon and automobile road is under construction leaving the state road on the Columbia about 12 miles below Chelan, following up Wells Cooley to First Creek, thence to the lake and along the south shore to Lakeside and Chelan. It will be the main thoroughfare from Wenatchee 
to the upper valley of the Columbia and Mehau rivers for wagon and automobile travel. I didn't realize that Wells Cooley, or Navarre Cooley as we know it today, preceded the Naps Cooley Road. <laughs> Naps Cooley, of course, had to fight Naps Hill. And, uh, but they, they finally did it, you know. Anybody remember backing up Naps Hill in a Model T? <laughs> the Model T's wouldn't go up forward because the tanks would, wouldn't, wouldn't, gra wouldn't give gravity. But you could back up Naps Hill. I could, it was, uh, I think, 38 when they finally replaced that. But I remember uh, uh, many a trip coming up Naps Hill at that time. But uh, I'm going to leave this with your, you folks along with that uh, uh, Lakeshoreland brochure. You might as well have it in your, your collection. But I wanted to talk about uh, a little more recent things. Uh, the development of power in this area. Uh, the first power, of course, in the, in the whole area was uh, uh, of any consequence was uh, the, 19, the, the Rock Island Dam was, was started in 1929 by Puget Power. But up here, uh, the Great Northern sold out its uh, distribution and its rights on the Chelan River to Washington Water Power in uh, the mid-20s. And finally, in 1927, my water power came in and bought the rights and uh, logged the, the lake and raised it 20 feet at that time. Uh, they were good citizens for the city, city of Winnet, the city of Chelan. And, uh, but about that time, uh, we were seeing the rise uh, of uh, farmer interest in uh, getting electricity to the farms. The state grange was full of very angry farmers because the private utilities of the state of Washington would not serve them without exorbitant cost. Uh, they made them pay for their own distribution out to their farms. So in 1931, finally, after exhorting the legislator to do something, uh, the 1930 uh, initiative was passed by the state of Washington authorizing uh, public utility districts to be formed. And about, uh, I think, 20-some uh, districts in the state of Washington were formed in the mid-30s, including Chelan counties. But Chelan County, of course, uh, didn't get into business until 1948 when Puget Power agreed to sell the Wenatchee District's distribution system uh, to Chelan County PUD. But Water Power was not willing to sell. And so uh, Chelan County PUD uh, filed a condemnation suit against Washington Water Power to take the dam and the distribution system up here in 1948. And that started battle royal in the legislature. 1948, 1950, 1952. Well, 1948 and 1950, the legislature was uh, democratic and it was uh, run by a prominent Granger uh, from Northeast Washington by the name of Charlie Hottie. Uh, he was the uh, uh, head of the And he wasn't about to let any anti-PUD legislature that can't come. But uh, 1952 came along. You remember what 1952 was? Huh? Eisenhower was elected. Yeah. And uh, both houses of the state of Washington went Republican. Prior to that time, uh, the, 40, the 50 folks, uh, Harry Wall had been elected senator from uh, Chelan County, and uh, Harry was a strong leader in the state senate and a supporter of right of power. But Harry was up against a battle in 1952 because Art Garten was going to run against him. 
And Art was a consummate politician yep. and had been a supporter of the PUD and public power all over. But uh, my Aunt Eva Anderson, by the way, did anybody here go to school to Eva? She was my teacher in the eighth grade there. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Eva was elected in 1948 to the legislature in Chelan County. She had, uh, she had come to Waterville in 1914 when she got married to her college sweetheart, Leonard, Leonard Anderson. And they taught at Waterville for about 10 years. Then she moved to Wenatchee and was a uh, teacher of English and dean of girls. And then uh, her husband came up to Chelan with his partner, Charlie Mc McMonagle, and started Mac Chevrolet. Uh, Mac uh, was uh, Linda Parlett's grandfather. Uh, and uh, they, they had a good, good thing going. So Eva moved up here and uh, started teaching school. And uh, they tell me she was a tough teacher up here. Yeah, I learned a lot. I remember <laughs> her telling me that she tossed a kid bodily out of class one time. <laughs> well, you wouldn't dare do that today. Uh, Eva, however, was a scholar. Uh, she had been head of the state uh, adult teachers in Olympia and at the same time was going back to the university to get a PhD, which she did in 1937. It was interesting because her thesis was on the equalization of taxes for school districts. You know, there are rich districts and school districts, and her thesis is on an attempt to equalize uh, the taxes so that the schools on even poor district could uh, do better. And her thesis was uh, resulted in a state law that was based on what she had done in 1937. She uh, was uh, also appointed by Governor Langley later on to be a regent of uh, the uh, University of Washington. Well, back to the power story. <laughs> she and Joe Lester were both strong uh, members of the Grange. Uh, they supported local public power. She thought that that uh, the PUD ought to have all of the power facilities in Chelan County. So they got a hold of uh, Harry Wall about a week before the election, and they called up a bunch of Grange leaders. And uh, the Grangers said, Harry will support you in this election if you'll change your tune and support the POD. And Harry said he would do that. Uh, Eva, Eva had a, a house on a hilltop just up above the, the uh, Forest Service. And I was at that meeting. It was very interesting. Harry had no hesitation. And he barely won. He won by about 50 votes. And I think the publicity that the Grange gave him put him over the top. The 1953 legislature, though, was really a tough one for the PUDs because a majority of the Republicans were for private power at that time. Well, Eva was a good salesman. She finally rounded up a number of votes in the House of Representatives from non-PUD counties, enough to defeat the attempts by Washington Water Power to uh, kill that PUD action. And 1953, it was, she was credited by the head of uh, the PUD Association, Ken Billington, for single-handedly being able to save the, the, the bacon for the PUDs at that time. And so, subsequent to that time, Washington Water Power agreed to uh, buy or sell the Chelan Dam and the distribution to uh, Chelan County POD. She was particularly strong in making sure that the schools were not going to suffer. And the legislature during that period put through a whole lot of different uh, acts uh, making it the PUD's 
to pay in loot of property taxes to the schools and the counties. And today, uh, fortunately, uh, our schools are not suffering when a public utility district takes over a private facility. Cheyenne County has been lucky um, over the years as the price of power has gone to six cents over in Seattle to 12 to 15 cents a kilowatt hour in uh, California and higher than that in Florida. We've got what, three and a half cents here and Douglas County. Well, we're lucky in another respect because when Eisenhower was elected president, his secretary of interior, Douglas McKay, the former governor of, governor of Oregon became uh, Secretary of Interior, and he decided we're going to de-emphasize federal power. And so they deauthorized a federal dam uh, at Priest Rapids and uh, uh, said the Corps of Engineers is not going to build that. And so uh, Grant County PUD filed on that. And they had a fight with the legislature because Governor Langley, our Republican governor at that time, this was 1943, decided that his state power commission should build Priest Rapids Dam. And he said, why? Grant County can't build a great big thing like that. And there was a big fight for about a year over who was going to build Priest Rapids Dam. Well, the Supreme Court finally uh, ruled in the PUD's favor, and Grant County was given, finally, a license to start Priest Rapids. Kirby Billingsley, who had grown up in the daily world at that time, became PUD manager in, 40, in 53, and he immediately filed on Rocky Reach Dam, and this was, fi this was followed the next year by Douglas County filing on Wells Dam. Subsequently, Chelan bought from Puget Rock Island Dam and gave Puget a big punch a bunch of power in exchange, as, as well as a, a quarter of the output to the alcohol plant at Wenatchee. And today, of course, our five, uh, three counties have five dams on the river and this dam here at Chelan and have more available energy to us at lower price than any other place in the whole United States. We just don't know how fortunate we are. Grant County is starting to put in a lot of uh, electronic stuff down there. Wenatchee has, Douglas County has one in East Wenatchee, one of these uh, big data centers. But uh, uh, we are fortunately in a situation where we still have surplus power and uncommitted power in Rocky Reach and Wells Dam for the future of this, this area. We don't know what the future will be, but we do know that <laughs> we've got clean energy. <laughs> it doesn't make any CO2, it doesn't pollute the atmosphere, and uh, uh, from now on, why, as long as I think you and I are going to live, we're going to have the benefits of uh, a power resource that uh, you and I, as citizens of Chelan County, own. Well, I think that's about my story about Lake Chelan and Chelan Dam. Uh, Eva uh, moved back down to Wenatchee. By the way, she did not have any easy time of it because that same year there, <laughs> over this PUD fight, there were a lot of people that still didn't like the PUD. One of them was the Chelan County Women's Republican Club. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, uh, we want to uphold the Republicans and American principles of franchise and curtailment of the New Deal socialization regime as represented by PUD pressure groups. 
you told us you would be interested in our reactions. We know if you judge by the daily world, the Grange, the Chamber of Commerce only, you will not get a true picture of Shalankai citizens. <laughs> well, anyway, that was the Shalankai Republican Women's Club that could not persuade Eva and Joe and Harry to turn their back on the Shalan PUD. It was an interesting time. Anyway, any any questions? Yeah. What part did the REA be in this? The REA was was a separate entity, and they were they were used in in some parts uh, around uh, Douglas, parts of Douglas County used in the REA, and so did parts of the Methow Valley, and I think there was an REA used up in the uh, uh, Lake Wenatchee area. Uh, the Rural Electrification Administration was a federal agency that loaned money, and so uh, uh, it was another attempt by the federal government, a successful one, to get uh, power to the, to the farmers. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's uh, been a, a fun fifth. Well, they're rebuilding the whole dam, as you know, and they're only using one powerhouse at Chelan Dam. I don't know when it's going to be finished, uh, but uh, the reason that one of the reasons they held the lake up was because they only had one uh, one penstock operating and one power, uh, one generator at Chelan Dam. Uh, it, uh, does anybody know when they expect to finish? Next year. Next year. Yeah. Oh, we were the, the PUD. Oh, you betcha. The Daily World. My, the Daily World was born. I was, uh, I was, uh, uh, took over the paper in 1950, and, and uh, believe me, we were, we were waving the flag for the PUD at that time. We were called the Wenatchee Daily Worker by some people. <laughs> <laughs> I would come up to Chelan and uh, I'd get a good meal from uh, my mother-in-law, who uh, was a pioneer up on up uh, uh, the Boyd District. Her name's Noe, and uh, uh, she grew up here in Chelan. Uh, my father-in-law Larry ran a lumber yard, and and his son Howard, my my wife's brother, uh, Chelan Lumber was a good place. They had a wonderful slogan: the uh, the home of good-looking men. <laughs> anyway, I have enjoyed the things that have come out of the uh, Chelan Historical Society. I knew Jim Linston well, and uh, I produced a, a, a little book on the history of the Holden Mine a few years ago. And uh, uh, you've had some, some great stuff coming out of Chelan here. Uh, Hack Miller's story, of, and uh, there's there's some really really good stuff that uh, Chelan was a you know a good sized place long before Wenatchee amounted to darn. It was like Waterville, you know. Waterville was a big city before Wenatchee was even started. So uh, at any rate, uh, uh, I recommend uh, Ruby Ruby Williams Hill. She uh, she was a good painter. Thank you for. Thank you. Uh, Wow. So you can go down and film forever. You know. Yeah, oh yeah. All right, thank you. And get some cider. Right, for that. <laughs> One more thing. We're supposed to have a chance to speak here. Uh, we would like to keep track of everyone who uh, takes a history notes. And I'm the editor, Mike Mary Shearer, of the history notes. And we would love to have people write or suggest stories for the history notes. Oh, oh, these are maps.
cats. These were used in the flat casting operation in a hot metal process. Thanks for we would cast these in metal. How did you do it? We put them in a casting box. But this one has never been used. No, no.